Welcome, if everyone could have a seat, we'll start this great celebration. Good evening, administration, faculty, friends, family, and PIN recipients. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the first ever formal pinning ceremony for Iowa State University. <laughs> Traditional graduation ceremonies bring to mind caps, gowns, tassels, but this evening you will not see our nursing graduates in the regalia of commencement. The nurses will not be handed their well-deserved diplomas. Rather, the nurses will be presented their Iowa State University nursing pin. A pinning ceremony is a time-honored tradition in nursing. Like the nursing pin, Iowa State, the nursing program is penning its own history. Before we start the pinning ceremony, I think it's just very appropriate that we acknowledge Dr. Virginia Wangerin. Yes, okay. <laughs> this is good. We would like to recognize Dr. Wangerin's retirement and her significant contribution in establishing the Iowa State University nursing program. I would like to start by inviting Dr. Laura Dunjali the Dean of the College of Human Sciences to say a few words. Thank you, Dawn, and let me add my welcome as well to all of you. It's just wonderful to see people here in person in the Great Hall of the Memorial Union, so thank you for being here. But this is a time to celebrate both our students who will receive the Iowa State pin for their uh, BSN degree, but I want to celebrate Jenny Wangerin as well. I came to Iowa State July of 2016 and immediately we start talking about a nursing program. And Jenny was hired to be our first director and came with such enthusiasm and energy and expertise um, to join us in that role and create this Bachelor of Science in Nursing program. So we, we worked closely with campus colleagues, with our colleagues across the Board of Regents institutions, with the Iowa Board on Nursing, and Jenny knew the path. She knew the way to make that happen, and she has just been a, a steadfast sort of rock for this program and such a leader for Iowa State. So, Jenny, thank you for your leadership in establishing the Bachelor of Science in Nursing program at Iowa State University. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Jolly, and we should also thank Dean Jolly for her long-standing support of this program and her dedication to all of us to get all of this put together. So I'm Ruth McDonald. I chair the Department of Food Science and Human Nutrition, which is the home for this BSN degree. About five years ago, I got a call from the former dean uh, asking me if we wanted to be involved in creating a nursing program here at Iowa State University. I jumped at it. I thought, what a great opportunity. We already had nutritional sciences, we have dietetics uh, in our department, and we were all about health promotion. And we thought this would be wonderful to have a nursing program. Of course, I knew nothing about creating a nursing program, but I did know how to write a job description and post it. And um, fortunately, one of the candidates that applied for the job of director of nursing was Dr. Virginia Wangerin. And she was so enthusiastic about this program, talked about what we could do, talked about the vision of what this program could be here at Iowa State, and she really wanted to come to Iowa State University. So, of course, we hired her, uh, not having any idea what this whole path was going to take and what road we had to go down to get a degree that didn't exist at Iowa State. We don't have a nursing program. We don't have any health 
degrees other than vet med uh, here at Iowa State. Uh, and our dietetics program has an accreditation program similar to nursing, but not nearly at the, the level of nursing. So we didn't know what we were doing, but Dr. Wangerin came in calm, understood the system, had a plan, told us where we were gonna go, what we were going to do, got to work right away, built the uh, curriculum, built the courses, made the very wise choice of getting me to hire Dr. Bowker who was also a wonderful member of this team, and then Mary Brown came on board as well, and the next thing we knew, we were teaching nursing students here at Iowa State University. And this road has been fabulous. We're now in our third cohort of graduates from this program, uh, and it, it's just been amazing. Uh, Dr. Wangerin has been steadfast in her support uh, for the program, her vision for what this could be, I didn't know at the time that I hired her that she knew every nurse in the state of Iowa <laughs> and probably has worked with half of them. So that's maybe a little bit of an exaggeration, but not a huge one. Uh, so all of those connections and all of that wisdom that she had about what nursing could be and how we could do this really made this happen. So we owe you this program. We owe you a debt. Uh, for what we were able to do here, and all of these students have benefited from what you started here at Iowa State. So we thank you for that. Uh, we wish you great uh, happiness as you move into retirement. We have a small gift from the department of some nice lawn chairs, Iowa State lawn chairs. We didn't bring them today, but these will let you and Jay remember that you need to relax and take some time for yourselves and enjoy traveling and enjoying your family. So again, thank you on behalf of the department and the colleges and uh, all of these students for what you brought here to Iowa State. So best wishes. <clears throat> all right. Establishing a nursing program at Iowa State University is an incredible achievement. But I want to, however, take a minute to address Ginny's retirement on a personal level. You have made your mark on nursing in Iowa. You're the past president of the Iowa Nursing Association. You've been recognized as one of the top 100 nurses in Iowa. You are an established leader and a national presenter. You are a devoted nursing scholar and educator. You are a gracious mentor to new leaders you are very willing to share your knowledge and the pearls that you learned along the way. You have a passion for advocating for the future of nursing on all levels. I respect you as a colleague and a friend. The time we work together has been nothing less than extraordinary. We've shared great joys and tribulations We've laughed until it hurts. We've toasted a time or two. <laughs> and we have solved many nursing and world issues. Just ask us. We, we do that well. I value our friendship. And I will be forever grateful that our personal and professional paths have merged. Enjoy your retirement sincerely, my friend. I wish you only great things. Thank you. All right, would you like to come up and receive your gift and say something? She gave me that look. <laughs> totally unfair to have prepared <laughs> remarks and then catch me without the opportunity to prepare. I stood her up the first time we were going to meet. <laughs> and, <laughs> and she agreed to a second opportunity. So I am very grateful for that. I actually reflected on my nursing career this morning because I was listening to the release 
of the Future of Nursing 2030 work that's been conducted over the last several years. And that was delayed because of COVID. And I heard some of the most amazing things. First of all, I have to tell you that I was born and raised in Northwest Iowa on a farm. And at that time, which was a long time ago, it was anticipated or was expected that farm girls would wear, marry farm boys and move to a different farm and raise a family. I was never ever, it was never suggested that I might go to college or that I might do something other than that. It was only the town kids that got academic advising as it was. But I wanted to be a nurse. So when I was 16 years old, I started working as a nursing assistant. And eventually I became a nurse. But I had to do it just like all of you did, a little bit at a time, with support from my family. And it's the best decision I ever made. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> I'm not good at this. But when I, when I was learning to be a nurse, we were instructed very carefully that you couldn't tell your patient their vital signs when you took them. You recorded them in the chart, and if the physician gave permission, you could share that information and even do some patient teaching. But it was the physician who was in charge, and we were there just to follow his orders. I was never a good follower. I started nursing as a married student, and I was in the first class where they allowed that. They sat us down and said, we're very concerned because we can't make you live in the dorm and follow our rules, so you must behave and be a good example. And so I got pregnant. <laughs> and that's pretty much the way I've been in nursing. I learned that if you complain, you'll be on a committee. But I also learned that's good because then you have a voice in what happens. So I was one of the first nurse informaticists in Des Moines because I didn't like writing in those charts. So Mercy Hospital was one of the first to develop a order entry system for admissions in all of the labs and dietary and all those kinds of things. And I was one of the two nurses that led that initiative. But education was always my very favorite. So I really focused on that and it's been a true joy. But what I heard this morning from the National Academy of Medicine, okay, those doctors who used to tell us what to do, what I heard from this extensive research and gathering of expertise and listening to testimonies that they've done over the last few years is that we, nurses, we are going to change the future. We are the ones who are going to address the disparities of health that we're all seeing and especially aggravated during COVID. They literally said, we need nurses across the entire country to be able to work to the full extent of their education. We need to make that a national decision, not just a local one. They said that what they see in the future is that nurses will be the ones leading these efforts in communities to fight poverty, to fight food insecurity, to fight housing insecurity, to elevate the health of every single person in this country. And, excuse me, you guys, you nurses that I've had the distinct privilege to be with, I commend you to go out and do that. Change the world and let them know that nurses are the ones that can make that happen. Thank you. This evening, we celebrate the accomplishments, accomplishments of nurses who have earned their BSN. I would first like to address our guests. As we sit in this room, we're amongst nurses who were confident enough to advance their degree. 
They were confident enough to advance the profession of nursing by earning their baccalaureate of science degree from Iowa State University. We are amongst nurses who dared to make change. These nurses were not dissuaded by thoughts of, am I too old? Or do I have enough experience? They were not dissuaded by commitments of being a mom or serving our country. We are amongst heroes. Heroes who worked on the front line during this unprecedented COVID pandemic. Those who remained responsive to their call of duty, providing vital care with compassion and dedication. We're amongst heroes who not only stepped up, but stepped forward. We're among the strong, knowledgeable nurses who dared to take a risk on a new nursing program, who are now sitting here as the first graduating classes from Iowa State University nursing program. We're amongst nurses who earned this recognition tonight. The, nurse, the nursing pinning ceremony is not simply a tradition. It is an important symbol of hard work, sacrifice, perseverance, and dedication. A nursing pin is simply not a gift, it is earned. To our pinning recipients, what is your hill? You may recall the first week of class, we watched a YouTube featuring Matthew McConaughey, and he asked that question, what is your hill? He challenged you to identify what in life brings you joy. Decide what is important to you, and then go get it. He asked the question, what is success to you? Is, it, is, is success earning your BSN? Is it going back to school for your doctoral degree? Is it retirement? Is it being a leader in your facility that you're currently working? Or working where you're at and continuing the valuable work that you're currently doing? Whatever it is, that's great. You decide. Do it. Own it. Prioritize yourself. But don't antagonize your own character to get it. Mr. McConaughey reminded us that where you are not is just as important as where you are. You are the author of the book of your life. Determine what you want your legacy to be. Build your legacy. Be your own hero. Look up to yourself and your future. In the words of Dan Danzel Washington, don't aspire to make a living. Aspire to make a difference. You possess everything you need to make a difference. The future of nursing has never been brighter. As Ginny had mentioned, just this week, we're so much alike, we're gonna say the same thing here. Just this week, the National Academy of Medicine released the Future of Nursing Report 2030 with new recommendations for the future of nursing. The report recognized the nurse's role in improving health of individuals, families, and communities. They addressed the role of the nurse in identifying social determinants of health and providing effective, efficient, equitable, and accessible care for all people. The report acknowledged the ability of the nurse to serve as a change agent 
in creating systems. Nurses will be the change agents in creating systems that build bridges in the delivery of health care and social needs of the community. The report also addressed the importance of the nurse in well-being and resilience. The nursing program at Iowa State University has prepared you well to meet these recommendations. Our program has a two semester, for those of you who are not students, a two semester um, course sequence that focuses on the broad continuum of health promotion. The first course, the culture of health and self care, we talk about the importance of caring for ourselves. Caring not only for our physical being, but for our emotional, spiritual, psychological well being. It is important not to neglect our own needs when we care for others. The second course is the population health course. We took a hard look at disparities. A hard look at disparities in our communities, in our state, in our country, and around the globe. We faced our biases. We addressed cultural humility. We examined the history of nurse leaders whom paved the way for modern day nurses to be champions of health care. Nurses are ranked amongst the top trusted profession for an astounding 19 years in a row. The Gallup poll revealed that 89% of Americans rated a nurse's honesty and ethical standards as high or very high. It's coming in even higher than last year's record-setting numbers. It is indeed a good time to be a nurse. It is the time for us to make change as nurses. It is the time for us to nurse others and to nurse ourselves. There's a poem in your bulletin that, I, that is very important to me, and it's the meaning, it talks about the meaningful work we do as nurses in caring for others. And she also addresses in this poem, caring for ourselves. If you don't mind, I'd like to read this to you. It's called The Front Line. We, as tattered nurses, stand on the battle's front line, taking care of others, dealing with body and mind, attempting to heal patients' wounds, to help them to go on with their life, lending an ear when in need, listening to their pain and strife, teaching some to deal with illness, telling them what the future holds, Good, bad, or indifferent, nurses help patients to be bold. We're always on the front lines, dealing with a never-ending fight. Health, healing, wellness, sometime we nurses need to take flight, for we too need time to heal, emotionally within ourselves, outlets to cope and learn, we can't always put our feeling upon the shelf. Somewhere there must be middle ground where we can all go and rest. And soon we'll return to the front line where nurses can be at our best. You are well prepared to be on the front line. You are being called to be on the front line and to make change. You're called to be that primary provider to make change in what is asked of nurses today. In closing, I want to recite a piece of the monologue of Florence Nightingale when she visited your class. Just give me a minute. Florence Nightingale said to y'all, when you earn your BSN from Iowa State University, you will receive your nursing pin and will practice as a respectful, educated, knowledgeable, ethical nurse. It will be my privilege at that time to call you my colleague who too received the calling to care and serve others. 
Be proud to be a nurse. And don't ever, never, never underestimate the change that you can make. You will change lives and you will be forever changed. You deserve to be celebrated. Thank you. At this time, I welcome the PIN recipients to share reflections from this journey. It's been a journey, and it's been a pleasure to, to be on this journey with you. So I would invite anyone, any of you nurses who want to come up to the front of the stage and use the microphone to share, to share anything, please do. I think we're on now. Oh, we're on now. Yes. All right. So my name is Laura Duncan. I was in the second class. And I, a couple things that I remember. I remember walking in the very first day, hoping I would not be the oldest person in class. And I wasn't. <laughs> Don got to be the oldest in our, in our class. Um, but we had quite a variety. We had um, classmates who had just graduated from the ADN program and here's me and Don who are like well and Jordan you had worked for a while too that like well I've worked for 15 years already and now I'm back at school so it was kind of interesting um, I think one of my favorite things we did as a class is when we did our clinical down in Des Moines and Ames and we just kind of we all piled into a van and let me tell you Professor Dr. Bowker can park a van like no other. She has this great big huge van and she'd fit it into this little space. We'd be like, are you sure there's enough room? She's like, yep, there's enough room. We're good, we're good. So we just got to travel as a class and interact with each other as kind of a, and with Professor Wingerin and Professor Bowker as a more personal level than just being the students in the classroom. So that was one of my favorite parts of class. Well, that's really tall up there. Um, um, obviously, I'm an old lady and wanted to go back and get my BSN, wanted to go to Iowa State like the rest of my family. So this was win-win for me. I love it. Um, and watching the kids grow up and, and uh, fly on their own was really neat. What, one of the things that I learned was when you talked about the self-care didn't have any of it. Was director of nursing at facilities for several years, 24 seven on call, that kind of thing. And I didn't know there was a, such a thing as work-life balance. It was awesome to find that out. So I'm no longer the director of nursing. Um, <laughs> I'm a chronic care manager at McFarland and I, I just, I, I it's Monday through Friday and I'm not on call 24 seven. and. And that, I think, was the, the biggest thing for me um, that I got out of the program and population health, and, and that's part of, of what I do, too. So it's been, um, it's been a wonderful journey, and I thank you guys for that. So I want to apologize because the only speeches that I've really given this last year and we're in front of my wife and two cats, so. <laughs> so my name's Jordan, um, and I am a nurse, but not only am I a nurse, I'm a baccalaureate nurse. When I first joined the Iowa State program, um, I'm not going to lie, I expected it to be um, what stereotypically 
was thought of BSN programs as fluff programs. Um, so these, uh, basically, I, I was coming in thinking that I was going to earn an easy degree over the, over the two years. Um, and then that was before I met Dr. Wangren and Dr. Bowker. <laughs> Um, so le let me tell you about these two. I have never met more fierce advocates for the nursing pr profession. They can be very intense. Um, and when they are together, I like to, co I like to uh, describe them as a freight train with no brakes. Um, so this is very evident with the quality of the program that they have put together here at Iowa State. Um, very early on in our program, they very quickly dispelled the myth that this would be easy. Um, and they were very right. Uh, they expected a lot from us, um, but I believe that is because they could sense our potential. Um, I could go on for a very long time with the stories for the past two or three years, um, but I would like to say that I entered the program as a nurse um, with not a lot of confidence in myself, and uh, by the time I've graduated, um, I've definitely found it. Um, Dr. Bowker and Dr. Wankerin have been instrumental as in my development as a person, a professional, and a nurse, and I would not, uh, I would not be successful without them, without you guys. Um, even after a year, uh, they are still um, vitally important to my progression as a nurse. Um, I feel like you guys deserve way more, but right now all I can say is thank you. Um, you guys hit me in the middle of the tracks at full speed. Um, but with your help, I was able to climb into the caboose, and I hope I'm able to join you as a conductor someday. I feel like that metaphor went better when I was writing it down, so I'm sorry about that. But thank you guys very much. Well, I guess I'll follow um, Jordan, who prepared a speech. <laughs> Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Mallory. Um, I started with the first semester of classes and I still have yet to graduate, but I'm hoping <laughs> after the summer I will be graduated through Iowa State University. Um, so with the COVID-19 um, pandemic, I at the time was working as an ER nurse and it was really scary. Um, new graduate with only a couple of BSN classes under my belt. Um, but I'm just, I really wanted to come up here. I could, there's too many great experiences to just pick one to talk about. But I am just so thankful to have been a part of a program like this that gave me the tools to feel a little more confident when I had no idea what the future looked like for a little bit. So thank you, that's all. <laughs> That's all I really have right now. I don't have a gift or anything like Jordan <laughs> said. <laughs> but um, if you know others who are interested in this program, I truthfully feel like I am a better nurse today for participating with Iowa State University. <laughs> Thank you. So the learning continues tonight because Dr. Wangren taught me something else about myself. I complain too much because I sit on a million committees. So. Tonight I learned that I too must complain too much like Dr. Wangren. Um, I think most of you guys have probably heard my millions of speeches about how the BSN program kind of changed my life. It wasn't just about um, an education to me. Um, I got my BSN, I became a better nurse. It made me understand more about me and closed a huge chapter in my life and start over again. Now I'm getting my doctorates at the U of I and I owe so much of that to Dr. Wangren and Dr. Bowker. Um, to know that I wanna be like you someday and inspire nurses um, just like you guys have inspired so many of us because you have been so good to so many of us and more than just teachers. So thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Elena. Um, I was one of the graduates in the first Iowa State class to go through. Um, just a couple things I have to say. From the very beginning when I heard Iowa State was having a nursing program, I was on board. <laughs> I've been an Iowa State fan my whole life and the day I heard a program was coming out in the news, I emailed Dr. Wingren and I didn't leave her alone that whole summer. Uh, <laughs> 
as soon as the program was set up, I was signed up and ready to start. Uh, from that very moment, I never had any nerves about this program being new or being one of the first ones through because the second I met these two, I knew that this was gonna be the best program in the state for a BSN. Um, other than that, going to speak at the Knoll with President Winter's team <laughs> was a great memory having these two there. That was when I knew that this was really gonna be a big deal um, and that Iowa State was developing a program that was gonna be bigger bigger than I was and we're, dang, it was right. <laughs> yeah, I learned a lot, I had a lot of good times. Uh, not many people say they got to go drink wine in the mountains with their professors. So that was one of my favorite memories too. <laughs> um, this BSM program developed me as a nurse. I wouldn't be who I am now. Like you said, be educated, knowledgeable, ethical, and that's what this program made me. So thank you, Dr. Wenger, and thank you, Dr. Bowker, and all the peers that are in here with me that I haven't seen in a while. Um, thank you for making this such a memorable part of my life. So thanks. Wow, thank you so much for sharing. Um, there is so much mutual respect and there's so much that we can do together. When nurses unite, sparks fly. And that's how we're gonna, that's how we're gonna make change. Thank you for being part of this program. Thank you for endorsing it. It is such a, such a privilege to be with, to work with you. At this time, I'd like to ask Dr. Wangerin to talk about the history of the pinning ceremony so we can get you those pins. This is something that uh, we've been looking forward to for a long time. So I'm gonna tell you a bit about the history of the nursing pin, it's also in your program. But the concept of the nursing pin as a symbol of service to others really dates back to the Maltese cross. It was adopted by crusaders and worn over thousands of years as a symbol of their service to Christianity. And over time, over centuries, variations of that symbol were gradually modified and in fact became family coats of arms, often symbolizing service to the ruler or to the head of the family. By the Renaissance, the guilds had adopted coats of arms, symbolizing masterful service to the community. So in a time when not a lot of people were literate, these symbols actually told the populace what that person's expertise was and who they could turn to for the assistance that they needed. So as a result of Florence Nightingale's influence, the importance of education for nurses was recognized and hospitals began developing nursing programs. The Nightingale School of Nursing at St. Thomas Hospital in London, which is still exists, was designed, they designed and awarded a badge with a Maltese cross to nurses as they completed their program. By 1916, a ceremony awarding the badges was a tradition in England and the United States. The badge symbolized educated women, sorry Jordan, but at that time that's what it was, who were prepared to serve the health needs of society. This symbol of service also brings many professional rights and responsibilities. Eventually, each school of nursing designed and awarded a customized pin. The United in the United States, the first pin presented to a graduating class occurred at Bellevue Hospital in New York City in 1880. The annual pinning ceremony is an important occasion for thousands of nursing students across the country. The distinctive pin they receive from their school is a symbol of their right to practice nursing. Pins are rich in symbolism. Many include a lamp, the traditional symbol of nursing which dates back to Florence Nightingale. Others feature a cross, the caduceus, or a laurel wreath. Colors have significance also. Blue represents loyalty and truth. Gold signifies wealth, worthiness. Green often stands for eternal life. Red is indicative of courage, and white stands for purity and integrity. The Iowa State University nursing program chose the historic lamp as the center symbol for the nursing pin. Florence Nightingale was referred to as the lady with the lamp in St. Philomena, a poem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. The colors gold and red are incorporated both to represent the traditions of worthiness and courage and the colors of Iowa State University. 
These pins can be used to identify the nursing program a person attended and provide a sense of pride and recognition. Nursing pins are presented at a pinning ceremony which symbolizes an official welcome and acceptance into the profession, and in this case, symbolize your advancement and commitment to your nursing career. Thank you. So at this time, we'd like to um, start with the pins. Uh, Dr. Ruth McDonald is gonna call your names up by class. And so at this time, I'll let her take the podium here. Gotta find my. So she's called up the first class, and we'll bring it up. So could, could the class of 2019 please come forward? Right here. Oh, I'm fall, sorry. Fall of 19. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Correct. Okay. Yes, please remember to bring your card when you come up to the stage. <laughs> Sorry, that was my bad for not reminding you. Elena Bo Bonert. Shirley Owen Yeboa. Tessa Sklinar. <laughs> Misty Brooks. Congratulations to the class of 2019. <laughs> Would the recipients of the class of 2020 please come forward? Spring 2020, I should have said. I'm sorry. Spring 2020. Jordan Elfont. <laughs> Laura Duncan. Taylor Grammer. <laughs> and Dawn Hales. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Congratulations to the Spring 2020 recipients. And with the Fall 2020 class, please, please come forward. Hope Halbrook. Rachel Forschler. Shana Shirky. Elizabeth Davis. Congratulations to the Fall 2020 class. And now may we have the Fall 2021 class. Courtney Martin. <laughs> Amy Egenhouse. Mallory Ruland. <laughs> Maria Larson. Esther Houston. <laughs> Oye Piju Salawu. Kaylee Guth. Morgan Bean. Congratulations to the 2021 class. <laughs> Congratulations to all of our graduates. Great job.
Congratulations. At this time, I would like to invite the PIN recipients and any other nurse in this room to stand to recite the Professional Nursing Pledge together. The Professional Nursing Pledge is on page 17 of the program. In full knowledge of the responsibilities I am undertaking, I promise to care for my clients with all the knowledge, skills, and understanding I possess without regard to race, color, creed, politics, sexual orientation, social status, sparing no effort to conserve the meaningful life to alleviate suffering and to promote health. I will respect at all times the dignity and religious beliefs of the clients under my care and hold in professional confidence all the personal information entrusted to me. I will refrain from any action which might endanger quality of life or health. I will endeavor to keep my personal skill full awareness of my qualifications and limitations I will do my utmost to maximize the potential of the nursing profession and uphold and advance its standards thank you you may be seated in closing I would like to sincerely congratulate, congratulate, good Lord. I would sincerely like to congraduate, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, this has just been too much. Okay, okay. I would like to congratulate the PIN recipients on this significant accomplishment in your nursing career. Family and friends, thank you for your support of these very, very special nurses. This concludes our program. However, I will say, it's only the beginning of what you're able to do. Believe in yourself. We believe in you. And you will make change. Thank you. If you would like some, I, I think you were told when you came up about some photo opportunities, we're going to leave the pin um, up on the slide if you want to take pictures with the pin. And there's also some pin cakes um, in back that you're welcome um, to have photographs with. Um, otherwise, continue to just um, converse amongst yourselves and enjoy this evening. Thank you. <laughs>